All right, so this is the part that we are going to create here. It's a little bracket that will actually be used to hold something like our electrical box in place. Or, you know, it could be mounted on top or wherever you want to build it right there. It's a simple part. However, it will get into a new command here, which is the whole command, which we haven't covered before. Now, in case you're wondering, there is a download that's available. So you can leaf through this document right here and kind of follow this step by step in case you get lost at some point. Because I will be going forward and back a few times just to kind of explain different features as we are introduced to them. I won't go over them a hundred times over and over again, but I will go through them the first time. So let's go ahead and jump on into this part and get started. I'm going to start off by revealing the origin just like this. We're going to click the sketch tool right there and I'm going to click on this top plane right there. Uh, that is the XY plane in case you're wondering. We're going to go up here to the top left. This is the two point rectangle. I'm going to click on the origin, drag up and to the left. This dimension is going to be seven millimeters. So I'm going to hit seven, hit the tab key to move it to the next box right there. And we're going to type 30. So it's seven by 30 millimeters. Hit the enter key and boom, that is placed down. If I hold the right mouse button down and move it up, you can see that we will repeat the last command right here. So then we can jump right back into that tool. I'm going to click in the top left, drag up and to the right. And this dimension here is going to be 25 millimeters by 10. Now, just in case you already click something down, remember you can go ahead and use this dimension tool if you need to. Let's go ahead and hit finish sketch here. And we're going to hit the little house so that we are back to looking at this in the isometric view. Now, let's go back up over here to hit the extrude button. And we're going to click on the two areas that we just defined right here. This is going to be 25 millimeters tall. Hit enter middle mouse twice and we're going to zoom all again and there we have it all right so we have our base geometry now we want to add a couple of holes there's going to be one hole that goes through here that's going to allow us to anchor into this aluminum profile right here and there's also going to be another hole right here that's threaded so that we can mount stuff to it in this case maybe an electrical box so we could create a sketch on this surface right here and extrude a hole through it or we can use a hole tool right here, which is going to do the same sort of thing, but give us a lot of kind of standardized dimensions. That's why it's going to be real handy. So if we click the hole tool and then we click on this plane right here, it's now going to put a hole through that plane. So right now we see over here in this dialog box here, it's giving us the single hole option right here. And it starts off by asking us what face do we want here. And then it's asking us for a reference. So our first reference is going to be this top line right there. In this case, this is going to be 12.5 millimeters. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. The next reference that it's asking us for is going to be another line. So in this case, 10 millimeters. So if we come on over here to the dialog box, we then step down to the shape settings. And now we can extend this hole all the way through our part by just dragging it out further, or we can do up to a surface or through all. Through all, and our example is going to be just fine. Uh, then you have hole types down here, simple counter bore, counter sink. We also have hole tap sizes for simple holes, clearances, or tapped. We're going to go with a clearance hole. And then you have your drill point that you can get into if you wanted to mess with that as well. Um, then you have some more options down here, such as the metric or uh, ANSI unified screw threads and all that fun stuff. We're going to stick with metric. We're not going to worry about the fastener type. The size is going to be M5 and the fit is going to be normal. If you have multiple objects on the screen, you can deselect which ones you don't want to actually drill a hole through by deselecting them from objects to cut. But for right now, this is all we want to do. So let's go ahead and click OK. So that's how the hole tool works if you're just using one single hole. However, if you are using one single hole or more and you want to have a little bit more control over it, here's how you do the other method. We're going to start by creating a sketch. In this case, we're going to go to this top plane right here. And then I'm going to create a line that's going to position us off the midpoint of this extrude right here. And then it's going to come down a known amount. In this case, I'm going to go 7.5 millimeters down from this edge. So this gives us a, a point at the end of that line. And we're actually going to use that to position our hole. Now, if we wanted to, we could actually go ahead and, and add even more lines and different points and whatnot um, so that we can add even more holes to the, our selection. I'll show you that in another ex exercise once we get it, once we get there. Let's go ahead and hit finish sketch real quick here. I'm going to select on that point and then click the hole command here. That's going to then move me from the single hole to the multiple hole location. And it's no longer asking us what kind of references we want to use here. It's already using that point as a reference. 
So in this case, we're going to take this, we're actually going to go through the distance of all. And then this example, we're going to use a tapped hole. So this will actually offset the hole a little bit smaller than it would normally be right there. So then you can tap it out and make some threads. Um, so let's go down here. We don't really need to worry about the rest of this. We're going to stick with the metric profile. There's many options down there if you have something else you want to use. And then we're going to change this to five millimeters. And we're not going to change the rest of this. You can model the thread if you want to. I find that a 3D printer is not accurate enough to really make good threads. Plus it's kind of resource intensive, so I'm not going to click that. We will just tap this using a standard hand tap later on. Click OK, and now we have two different holes. We have one that is clearance for the five millimeter, and then we have a tapped hole, which is going to be used for five millimeter as well. And you can see that the radius here is different depending on what hole you click right there. So what we did there is we created a couple of precise holes based on what it's used for, rather than trying to look it up on a table and do it ourselves. So really, really handy tool, and you're gonna use it a whole lot. All right, so that completes our part. Although what we can do here just to make this a little bit more fancy is we can put a chamfer all the way around this edge. Let's make it one millimeter and that just ends up looking really cool. You can make parts look cool for free when it comes to additive manufacturing because, well, it's just a tool path that's recreating everything you have on the screen. But you wouldn't really do this in, in real life because you'd have to actually machine all these little chamfers and that would just be super expensive. But anyhow, you see right there, I selected a bunch of things, I actually selected through the part as well. Kind of cool. Play around with it, have some fun, and that is our part complete. Let's go ahead and save this as the electrical box bracket, and then we'll move on to the next part.